Hey everyone, Brian Zane here. You know, I may be on the road, but it's not going to stop me from giving you my predictions for this Sunday's Fastlane event. Oh, I can hear that theme song now. Seriously, how has that song not been a Fastlane theme song in that show's rich for maybe five year history. I think if Triple H, when he eventually takes over the company and he can have as many theme songs for pay-per-views as he does for single takeover shows, then maybe we'll get that Eagles song as the official theme for Fastlane. Anyway, let's talk about the kickoff match, Rey Mysterio versus Andrade. These two, of course, have had quite the war this last a month and a half, maybe two months. It's been a real great a clash of styles. You know, there's kind of Rey, who's more the old school luchador, uh, contrasting with Andrade, who's bringing the new school flavor. It's a young versus old kind of thing here. That's what they've been really building this whole feud on, basically. Andrade wants to feel redeemed by taking out like his, his idol growing up. And it's been mostly skewed toward Andrade. I don't want to say Rey has never won in this feud, but Andrade has definitely won most of, if not all, the matches in their feud. Uh, which is why I think Rey is going to win this match on the kickoff. I think it's going to be a great match, a great way to open the show, because we see every time these two are in the ring together, you know, magic happens. I don't want to sound too much like hyperbole, but that's they, they do great stuff in the ring. So I do think Ray is going to win this time, hopefully leading to something more down the line. Like I've been saying, I think it'd be great if these two had a WrestleMania matchup. The amount of which these guys have been fighting, I don't want it to be a case of burnout or by the time we get to Mania, we're kind of sick of it. But, you know, it's hard to get sick of what they're doing when they're impressing so much. The Raw Tag Team titles are being defended in a triple threat match as The Revival defend against Ruble and Aleister Black and Ricochet. This one to me is kind of a tough one to call because I can see them putting the belts on Aleister and Ricochet to really just keep giving them that momentum of having been called up and they're the hot new act from NXT and just putting the belts on them to really kind of solidify them put like the put the stamp of approval on them in the main roster i can see them doing that however it would be kind of uh you know a bummer to have revival losing all these non-title matches and then ultimately just, ah, lose the, the belts on pay-per-view in a match where they may not even be involved in the decision you know it, it could be possible maybe alistair and ricochet could pin someone for ruble especially after all the crap the revival went through to finally win the belts from uh from uh gable and rude and then to have done nothing with it since they won the belts. That makes you think they are going to retain uh, at the pay-per-view. Just have them for a little while longer. I can see them stretching this out to having Alistair and Ricochet fight the Revival at WrestleMania, perhaps, for the belts and having them win there. So yeah, I don't see the Raw Tag titles changing hands this Sunday. Sasha Banks and Bayley, the Boss and Hug Connection, defend their Women's Tag Team Championships against Nia Jax and Tamina, the Samoan Slaughterhouse. I feel they haven't been using that team name for a while since Elimination Chamber. I want to see them bringing that back on a more consistent basis basis. This is another one I can kind of see going either way because on the one hand I think having a, a chase going into WrestleMania would be good for uh, Sasha and Bailey. Have a rematch or something going into Mania against the, the insurmountable odds of Nia and Tamina as this powerful force. Although that would be kind of disappointing to have like the first ever women's tag team champions, first ever women's tag team champions, lose in their first defense. Uh, it kind of makes them, I think it would make all they fought for at Elimination Chamber look kind of weak. So I do think think they are going to retain here just to try to add them a little more credibility to Sasha and Bailey as a team a little more credibility to the tag team championships in particular I'm not saying they have to hold the belts for a year but I think it's just good to get this guy for this first big obstacle and we know how skilled Sasha and Bailey are and hopefully they'll be able to use their their good plucky underdog status and their teamwork to be able to you know outmaneuver and, and defeat Nia and Tamina kind of in a similar way to what they did at Elimination Chamber when Nia KO'd herself and then Tamina kind of fell on the sword that's kind of something I see happening here at Fastlane as well. In a rematch from Elimination Chamber, the Usos defend the SmackDown tag titles against McMiz. And the big hook with this show, is this particular match is, is taking place in Miz's hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. And Mr. Miz, the Miz's father, is going to be at ringside for it. Uh, unlike uh, the match at Elimination Chamber, I do think that Mr. Miz will somehow be involved in the finish here. Some kind of distraction is going to go down. Basically, no matter whether or not he is involved, I think that the Usos will retain, they'll hold on to the championships and go on to face whoever right now. Because right now the SmackDown tag scene 
is kind of like there's a lot bubbling up coming to the surface. You've got Nakamusev. You've got the Hardy Boys reformed. You've got Alistair and Ricochet who kind of bounce back and forth right now between the shows. There's a lot of stuff going on with SmackDown's tag scene that makes it kind of like, okay, well, maybe something interesting is going to happen at WrestleMania. Right now, I don't know who the Usos would possibly face. I can't think of it right now. Maybe the Hardy Boys. Who knows? But I think that um, Usos will keep the belts. This will lead to more friction between Miz and Shane that was starting when they first lost the belts. So, you know, some, someone's going to turn on somebody. We, I don't know. I couldn't tell you who's going to turn heel at this point right now. But maybe that'll lead to the Miz-Shane singles matchup that we've been hearing rumored for so long. Asuka defends the SmackDown Women's Championship against Mandy Rose. And you know what? I just feel bad for this whole SmackDown Women's division because it's been totally left on the back burner in favor of everything going on with the increasingly convoluted storyline of Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch and Charlotte. The latter two women of that trio are SmackDown women, yet they're going for the Raw Championship. So Asuka's kind of like on this island by herself where she's not even on TV that much. And, you know, one of the last time she was on TV, she lost to Mandy Rose, which justifies this match happening happening at Fastlane. And of course, there's the news that she got a bit of an injury scare at a house show this past week, but she seems to be fine. Uh, you know, I don't see Asuka losing this matchup. I think that she's going to take care of Mandy Rose pretty quickly here, um, or at least very decisively. Uh, it's just, I feel bad because this is a, you know, it's a match you could have had some build to and made it interesting, but there's just so little time on TV was devoted to it. It's kind of a who cares thing. This whole SmackDown Women's Division now is just kind of like in limbo while we wait for, let's wait for the actual stars, the actual female stars fighting over the Raw Women's Championship, because that's clearly the more important one. So let's have those important ones get their stuff out of their system. And then we'll maybe, who knows, put some time and effort into the SmackDown Division. The Shield reunites one more time to take take on the team of Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, and Baron Corbin. To me, this one's a no-brainer. If anyone but The Shield wins this matchup, I will be surprised, maybe a little pissed off at what happens here. It just seems so obvious The Shield's going to win here because it's The Shield and they're reuniting, so why would they lose? I think the big question mark for me is after this match, what do Roman and Dean do uh, for WrestleMania? Because we know Seth is going to be involved in his match with Brock Lesnar. Will they add Seth and will they add Roman and Dean to the championship match? I kind of hope they don't, but um, you know, I, I don't know what else they would do with them, honestly. I don't know if they're going to put Roman in a singles match or some other kind of big thing. I mean, anything's possible, and they're probably going to want to try and ride on the, 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 the popularity he has now and the goodwill he has now, having come back from leukemia. So, I mean, maybe anything's possible with that, but th that's just speculating into WrestleMania. For now, for the purpose of this show, Fastlane, easily the Shield wins. Becky Lynch versus Charlotte Flair, and if Becky wins, she's added to the Raw Women's title match at Mania, making it a triple threat match. Boy, what a tangled web we weave. I feel just in this last week alone, this one go-home episode of Raw, they added like two, maybe three new layers of complexity and difficulty to understanding how we've gotten to this point in the storyline. Uh, be that as it may, I'm sure it's going to be a great match. Like, the real interesting thing for me is how are they going to have this match go any, any kind of considerable length when uh, Becky is selling all these different injuries. There's, there's a leg injury she's been selling since the Rumble, but then there's also, you know, the ribs and the whatnot from her beatdown from Ronda. So there's a lot going on. Oh, and the arm as well, because she was putting the arm bar a few times on Monday. So there's a lot going on here. Uh, I think they kind of killed the momentum though on SmackDown when they had Becky, you know, be able to take Charlotte down, put her in the disarm her. I think it's a much better cliffhanger, as I said in Who Wore It Better, much better cliffhanger to have Becky get beat down on Monday and you don't know what her status is going to be going into the pay-per-view. But instead they kind of gave it away on Tuesday when she got, you know, an edge on Charlotte. And so Charlotte looks kind of like a chump for getting outsmarted by this woman who's like on one good leg and is just continually getting more and more beaten down and broken. So if Charlotte loses to that into that form of Becky Lynch then what the hell is Charlotte going to be at the end of that it seems kind of weak to me either way I think Becky is going to win this thing and go on to be added to the triple threat match at Wrestlemania Finally, Daniel Bryan defends the Hemp Championship against Kevin Owens, and as the weeks go by, the more and more I think this is actually a pretty good idea that they didn't pull the trigger on Daniel versus Kofi Kingston at Fastlane. They're clearly saving that for the next show, for WrestleMania. Kofi's going to get his big shot then, which I think is appropriate. Kevin Owens being put in as kind of a stopgap. It did come out of left field at first, but like I said on Who Wore It Better, they did a really good job just in this last week really asserting Kevin as like, you know, new babyface 
case, going to be you know fighting and trying to get the belts off of Daniel. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that Daniel will win and retain the championship, uh, but I don't. I, I am curious, kind of like how I felt about you know Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose after the Shield match earlier. I, I'm really curious where Kevin Owens is going to end up after this, because like, is he going to stay in the WWE Championship scene with Daniel and Kofi? Will that become a triple threat match? You know, maybe Sami Zayn will come back and we'll get those two teaming up again in some capacity. Uh, there's a lot of what ifs right now. I feel like there's a lot of different ways. Things could go after fast lane with a lot of these players. Because some of these things where it's like, okay, we have an idea of where they're going to be. Some people, their destiny has been preordained, we know. And there's a lot of question marks. They have like about four weeks, uh, three and a half or so actually, to try and really like, you know, fill in the blanks and get everyone in a spot. Hopefully not everyone is just going to be involved in the, you know, the Andre Battle Royal or something. They'll be putting some actual matches. We will see with that. But I definitely see it's going to be a good match between Daniel and Kevin. These guys are, they, they work great individually together. I think they have a lot of good chemistry. So I think this is going to be a really good match. Daniel goes on to retain, probably thanks to uh, Rowan Chicanery. Uh, moving on to the match at Mania. Will Kofi and the New Day get involved here? They said they're going to be at Fastlane. So they didn't say what capacity. So maybe they will get involved in this matchup as well. Maybe it'll end a huge schmoz, who knows? But either way, I say Daniel wins and retains the championship. Well, those are my picks, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you think is gonna happen this Sunday in the comment section below, and I will see you on the other side with my fast lane review coming out either late Sunday night or early Monday morning. But until then, I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.